Hello, and welcome back to the next in our series of videos on introduction to the financial services industry. This is this video is going to be called Life of a Trade, and we're going to talk about things that happen during the trades process. Um, again, I've talked about this before. I'm going to probably stop doing these disclaimers at some point, just to let you know these are basic high-level presentations, not meant to be expert deep dives. And I'm not doing any, I'm not providing any sort of um, recommendations on, uh, on how to invest or how to trade for a trading strategy. And I've talked about this before. I've said, you know, a lot of what we do, if you think about trading, if you think about transactions, you know, it's a lot like McDonald's, as my friend John Ferrari used to say. Um, you know, some a customer comes in, they place an order, the order go, goes goes to the back of the, uh, the restaurant, it gets filled. Uh, as it gets filled, it gets brought up. Uh, the, 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 the person at the cash register is going to you know, collect the cash or credit card or whatever to pay for the transaction. A receipt is going to be, is gonna be uh, produced. Uh, the client is probably going to take their receipt and make sure that everything they paid for matches what's the food that's on the tray or in the bag. And then if everything is all matched and good, um, they'll pick up the tray of food and they'll go eat lunch. And that, that's kind of what happens in, in our business too. Now, I'm gonna use the example here, life with trade. And I'm gonna get back to this whole thing we talked about, but the idea that there are executing brokers, clearing brokers and introducing brokers. Where the introducing broker owns a relationship to the client, the executing broker is responsible for the relationship to the exchange and getting the trade executed. And the clearing broker is responsible for the settlement clearing of the trade and dealing with the depository of the clearing corp. So in this case, let's assume you've got an investment advisor and the investment advisor is a customer of this introducing broker and the investment advisor uh, have trades they want to do, place orders. The introducing broker is going to then, he's going to go send those orders to the executing broker. And I know that we talked in an earlier presentation that the brokers don't have to execute off the exchange. They might fill part of the order from, um, from inventory, or they might send it out to market maker, or they might go out to an ECN. But let's just assume for this example that this order gets routed to the, this order gets routed to the exchange. Uh, so this order gets routed to the exchange. Uh, the exchange is going to fill the order and send back a notice of execution. And that notice of execution is going to say, hey, your order of so many shares at such and such price was executed and was filled. And that notice of execution is going to go back um, via the executing broker back to the introducing broker, who's going to tell their client, hey, you put in order to buy a uh, thousand shares of uh, such and such asset at, at a market price. Um, it's now been filled, and here's here, here's what the price that you got it at, and uh, you know here's the details. In a, in a, in the same time, the exchange is going to tell the depository and clearing corp um, that this activity took place. Now, note that the exchange doesn't know anything, and neither does the executing broker. They don't know who the end client is. They don't know the investment advisors. They don't have any of that information. Um, but they know that a certain number of trades, a certain number of shares were executed at a certain price. And that's what they're going to share uh, to the depository, because it's all going to get matched and netted up later in the process. Also, the executing broker is going to say, hey, um, I did so many shares at this price, uh, uh, and it's going to let the depository know what they did. Um, depository is going to have this information be visible to the clearing broker because the, the back office, the operations staff at the clearing broker are going to start looking at this and saying, okay, well, let's start getting ready. Let's figure out what are we going to have this going to settle? How many securities are we going to have to deliver? How much cash are we going to have to deliver? You know, what are we, we going to have to do? And the executing brokers can provide that same information. So, you know, getting the execution, the order to the execution, that was the easy part. That was quick. That happened quick. Maybe that happened at 10 o'clock in the morning. 
But all this other activity, getting all, getting the depository involved, getting the uh, the clearing broker involved, finding the, the shares, finding the cash, getting the cash instructed, the cash movement instructed to the custodian, getting the secure uh, any shares movement instructed to the custodian. That all takes takes a lot more time and effort, and that's what the clearing broker is working on doing. Um, at the end of the day, what's going to happen is the depository is going to match up everything he's heard from the brokers, everything he's heard from the exchange, and he's going to figure out who owes what. And he's going to provide a report to everybody, let them know what they owe. And that that all that information about what you what you owe in shares and cash is going to be available to the clearing broker, their back office operations staff. They're going to run their batch issue the instructions, and hopefully this will all move forward to settlement. And the, the broker, the institution broker will, will, will get a file or get the data at the end of the day of how they should begin their, their books for the opening of the next day's business. So if this was Thursday, they want to know on Friday when they come in, how much cash and how many shares, what shares they have available to trade, how much cash and what cash they have available to trade. And that's, that's that example at a high level. I'm going to take the same example and go through it one more time where we're looking at um, an example. This example is Canadian equities. I could have done this as US equities, but I just chose to do something different for Canadian equities. And these are equities traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange and where the clearing and settlement is done via the CDS, which is the Canadian Depository. Also, for the executing broker here, I just use Broadridge because I happen to know that Broadridge is an executing broker in Canada. And they're actually a pretty good broker, from my experience, for executions. So you have an introducing broker, has investment analysts, uh, I'm sorry, investment advisors who are, who, who are placing orders. Um, the introducing broker is going to send those orders to Broadridge, who's their executing broker for execution. They're going to get validated and they're going to go to the exchange and be executed. Notice of execution will be returned. The clearing corporations can be advised. Clearing corporations are going to get, move on. Let, the, let the, um, the clearing broker's back office, let's say the clearing broker could be uh, uh, Fidelity Canada or somebody or uh, Penson. Um, they're going to be advised. They're going to start working on on what do they have to do to, to settle and clear this operation? People to settle and clear the trades. Um, end of day files will go forward. Everything will get matched up at the, uh, all the brokers and the exchanges will notify the, the, the Canadian depository of um, what, they've, what they've done. The depository is gonna match everything up to match what each, each broker says they've done versus what the, the exchange says is done, and they're going to come back and tell everybody, okay, that's where we matched everything up. Here's what, here's what you all going to have to deliver in securities um, or cash to settle these transactions. And the back office of the clearing broker is going to have more access to all this information and is going to use it to um, run their batch and settle out. And when everything's said and done, uh, before the business of the next day, the, the institution brokers can be advised that, okay, for your beginning of your day tomorrow, how many shares and how much cash do you have available to trade? So whatever you do today, at the end of day today, let's say you do this on Thursday, when you come in and you're ready to start your business on Friday morning, you want to know how many shares do I have available, how much cash do I have available to trade today? And that's what happens. Um, also, you have to do risk management. You have to notify your risk team so they understand where you are in your process. I've done this slide before. I hope it isn't too confusing, but I'm going to go through it again anyway. Because um, this talks about the depository and the clearing corp, where before we were talking about the depository, Canadian depository, and a clearing bank in Canada. Let's talk about two brokers. In, in this case, 
broker green and broker red. And let's assume that broker green and red, that they're both executing and clearing brokers. Make it all simple. They're, they're not only the executing broker, they're also the clearing broker. And broker green runs their process. And at the end of the day, they determine that they, that they owe cash, that they, they're going to need to move cash. They've, they've bought more stuff than they've sold. Um, and Broker Red has determined that he's, he, he's going to owe shares. He's netted everything out and figures that he, he's going to need to deliver shares. So what's going to happen is Broker Green is going to instruct his custodian to move cash to their account at the depository, to their box at the depository. And Broker Red is going to instruct his custodian to move shares to his box at the depository. And the custodians are going to get those instructions and they're going to execute on them. Now, at this point, it, this is all work being done by the back offices of the two uh, uh, brokers, uh, the two clearing brokers. And all the brokers and all the clearing corps and all the um, uh, uh, exchanges, they're all providing their information and it's going to the clearing corp. And the clearing corp takes all this information for the brokers. They take all the trade data. They take all the data from the exchange. They gather everything together and they figure out who owes what. They net everything down. They figure out who owes shares, who owes securities. And then what they're going to do is they're going to go and they're going to check with the depository. When they make sure that everything is good and that all the cash that's required has been deposited and all the shares that are required for settlement have been, have been deposited. They know that they're gonna be ready for, for settlement. Now, it's possible at this point that maybe the cash, all the necessary cash hasn't been delivered yet, in which case the, the people in the back office in the operations area at the, at the uh, at green broker as the custodian, as the, uh, clearing broker, they're running around, you know, they're getting notified, hey, you're short on cash. You need to get your cash in there. And if they don't get the cash in there, they run the risk that they could have failed settlements. And that could open them up to regulatory fines and other, other actions. And they could get nasty grams from the uh, depository. Same thing with the shares delivery. If, if, the, if the clearing court is saying you owe more shares than you delivered, or you owe shares and they haven't been delivered, um, the back office the, at the clearing broker, red clearing broker here, is going to be told, hey, you got to come up with the shares. you got to make this right. you got to instruct your custodian to add more shares. So it's a little bit of a dance. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rush. It's also stuff that people need to, will tend to do at the last minute. Because obviously, if let's say you've got a T plus two situation, where you've got the trade date and then two days to settle, uh, people will tend to want to put the cash up at the last minute or deliver the shares at the last minute because they've got other things they're doing with it. But ultimately, if everything is good and everything mashes out, the clearing corp will say, fine, you're good to settle. They'll instruct the depository. And at this point, the depository will then release the securities and they will tell, okay, let's move the shares to the custodian of a green broker, let's move the cash to the custodian of red broker and um, everything's gonna be received and everything will settle and then we'll be ready for the next day. Um, this slide, it tells the same story. I actually stole this uh, diagram on the right from a, a slide that was on the, uh, years ago that was on the, uh, the DTC, uh, the DTCC uh, website, and I, I can't find it there anymore, but it, it's, it's simple. It shows at the end of the day, you net everything down, you provide all the information to the NSCC, which is owned and operated by DTCC, right? That's the National Securities Clearing Corporation. So they're gonna do all the US trades. This is, before we were talking about Canada as an example, this is the US example. Um, NSCC is going is to net down all the trades 
and issue settlement instructions to all the firms. They're going to tell everybody how much money you owe or how many shares you owe. And the firms, the brokers, are then going to have to instruct their custodians to deliver the cash or deliver the securities. That's the DTC model in the US. Again, DTC operates DTCC and NSCC. So they're, they're both a clearing corporation and a depository, where DTCC is a depository and NSCC is a clearing corporation for US equities. And MBSCC is the clearing corporation for uh, mortgage-backed securities. And again, all this is netted down. This is all, you know, we don't settle one trade. So if you're, this is one of the things when I did this presentation one time, uh, somebody said, well, if I buy 100 shares of uh, Disney, does it go through this process? Well, no, it all gets netted out. Um, it, you know, this is, this, is, this is what the brokerage firm is settling against the street. This is what, what the firms are settling against the street. Your individual trade is in there somewhere, but it's all been netted back. You can read this uh, description if you have any questions. So thank you for your time. Again, my name is Paul Judge. My email address is listed there. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll do my best to answer your questions. So thank you very much and have a nice day.